Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the vlog. Um, this week, I've got the team doing some different passing exercises and some different passing drills, okay? You're actually coming to us midweek, so the team's still developing some of those skills. They're currently working on some passing drills. We're gonna move into two styles of passing from the inside position, so like headquarters and knee cut positions. Last week, you saw the dog piss pass, okay? Another name for that is high step passing, um, but you know, like sometimes I like to give it a little bit of a different name so it sticks with the team, you know, bit of humor always goes a long way in your coaching to help people memorize things, right? We don't always have to call it what it is, we can have funny names for it, we can have different names to kind of help systematize it for our members, okay? So stay tuned for this episode and uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy, sure. That's one of the things about guard retention that you're gonna really have to like um, drill into your mind is that prevention is better than cure, okay? Watch, special K, even, even if I'm doing all the right things, I watch her go past and now I try to solve the problem, it's gonna be really hard, okay? Sure, I might have some tricky shit that I can do, but now watch. I just proactively put my foot in. And now it's, she doesn't even get all the way past my knee line. So if you can just be a little bit more proactive, you know the step's coming, so block it. That's like that uh, Jedi mind trick, you know, like when you roll with the higher bell, it's like, oh, they knew what I was doing. They were just proactive. Yes, better. Cool? Yeah, go, go, go. Yes, better. Nice, good. I'm on a side and she takes a step, and it's very easy for me to start moving and pivoting, okay? Because I'm not flat on my hips and I'm not flat on my back, okay? The only time I want you flat on your back is if they've forced you to be flat on your back in a pimp, okay? Or you're asleep after being choked unconscious. We don't want that though. I know sometimes we do have that intuition that, that goes in our head. I feel like that's the right thing to do. But if we rely on that too much, um, we don't, we're not proactively problem solving a situation as it occurs. We're kind of responding. So don't rely on that. You want to have some responses that you're just like, I'm just going to go Dela, reverse Delahiba and it will stop them. And now they're like, oh shit, and they've got to, they've got to stop and pause and think about what they've got to do, okay? Senor Ming Dong. Ni hao ma. You said senor. Senor. That's, uh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. you're Mr. Worldwide, you know. Hella has got hella ass, okay? And hella back. Baby got back, okay? It's hard for him to beat that surface area. So watch, even if I go around like this and he tries to follow, it's hard, okay? Try and turn and follow me while you're on your back like that. Try and bring your legs back in front. It's, yeah, it's not gonna go well, okay? You gotta play a good guard off your side like this, okay? Because now watch, I turn this angle here and he can follow the whole way through with contact and frames and, and he can move easier, okay? So guys, like, I know that seems like a very fundamental concept but that's gotta be something that you always do, okay? I don't like to say always and never but if you want to have a good guard, you can't play flat like that, okay? So, the passes we're going to look at are where we get to this position here, okay? One leg in, one leg out, and we're going to start to play off of a knee cut position, okay? My hand is going to go inside like this. My knee and elbow connect to make this big wall here that stop his knee from getting to frame in front of my chest. Because if his knee gets in here, he can hold me off and actually extend me away. So when I come in here, I've come in with one leg, my hand slides in. I've made a big wall with my knee and elbow, and I start to push his thigh to the mat with my leg, okay? I'm not trying to drive my knee through just yet because there's no space here for a knee cut. For a good knee cut, guys, I need an underhook. As you can see here, if Halasan's posting well, it's gonna be hard for me to get any kind of underhook that's meaningful. 
So we're gonna do a rail drag, okay? You might wanna come around this side so you can see. The rail drag, guys, um, is, it's a technique that Jason Rao uses quite a lot, and you're starting to see a lot of the Nogi guys using it to go back to making a successful knee cut pass, okay? When he frames here, I'm gonna threaten more chest to chest pressure, and as he pushes back and his elbow goes away from his knee, this is when we can hit the move. My hand goes behind, I go face to the sky, I throw that by, and I invade the space. Ideally what I want is I want to throw this by and I want to get his bicep trapped by my shoulder and hand, okay? So we're here, I've been pushing in, I go away, throw it by, and I come in low with my head, crunching my shoulder in, okay? Now, I drop my hips in, I push my knee through, and I can finish my knee cut, okay? Finishing inside control, settling back here where my head's over the far shoulder. The key detail there is getting deep on that underhook with that arm, and also, not just going like this. I'm not just trying to drive my knee. I'm going through here, my hip collapses onto him, and then I push my knee in a circle and around, like I'm sliding home base in a game of baseball, okay? Knee cut position, row drag, and go through to the finish. I'm in here. You see how I'm closing that space off there? I'm gonna throw this and I'm collecting your arm like that so it stays low. If you try to pull it back, it doesn't matter. Okay? I wanna do this. Make a circle with your knee. Well, that's the thing about these positions is once you go to them, and when we go to this next position, the guy just begs you to pass. He's gonna be like, fuck this, man. All right, team, cool. Very good, very good. This is a very, very strong passing position to get to, but you have to get to it, okay? You know, if Helison is playing a good guard position, you know, and he's in like this, and he's keeping good distance, it can be very hard for me to get in. So. That's why we did that passing drill, because sometimes a little bit of lateral movement is going to help you to get in, okay? Once you start getting deep on this position here, it's very easy to develop your pass, because I've split his hips, okay? You see, I'm giving him a lot of pressure onto the inside of his thigh, okay? One of the things that he might do here is kick his knee through and bring it back in front, okay? This is kind of one of the basic counters. He may also come in and over the top. So he might topside pummel. So I get to here and he might bring his leg over the top like that, okay? So you can go from behind or the front. Now, I don't wanna not show you this position because you're gonna be like, oh, I'm getting here and I'm trying the rail drag and I can't pass because his knee is stopping me from getting past, okay? Especially if he's self-framing well. What I mean by self-framing is you see how he's got this connection here? Even if he's just holding his knee open, I can't get chest to chest with him, okay? So we're gonna have to do something else if he puts this knee in front, okay? We're gonna start to sprawl. We're gonna get our neck, our cheek, uh, bleh, my chest over his knee, okay? So you have to open up a little bit, okay? Here, and now I can start to sprawl out with my hips. Yeah, it's awful, eh? I'm going over the top of his IT band and turning both his knees away and starting to point away with my knees. Notice my knees not on the ground, okay? My knees point this direction and then I can start to slide past and still finish, okay? Whereas the, the position before I can't really camp in it, like I can't go to this first position here and just chill for very long. You need to be proactive about your passes here. I might be trying to row drag him, I might be going kick or whatever. If I get to this position and this knee comes in, now I can start to camp on this, okay? Knee across, notice I'm using my elbow a little bit. Bang, putting it under my chest and starting to get that sprawl working. Once again, it's a little bit of that like Jake Shields combo, okay, where my hips point away, my toes point away and I start facing out into space. Now I can put in a near side underhook, 
I can put in cross face, I can pummel off that leg, and then get into side control, okay? Sound good? Let's do it. So I want fast to be like this, rather than fighting it, I'll just give it. And that's what they want. That's what they want. Because really, really, your only other option is to kick your top leg back through into a half guard. And that's also what they want. Because now they can go back to the more traditional half guard passes like, uh, you know, double unders or whatever, um, pummel pass or anything like that, you know. We'll get to that in the second half of the week, you know, but like right now I think this is... So you see he's gone the other way. Hey, let's look at a couple, um, a couple things that could happen that we're going to explore later this week, okay? Now guys, once you've got to that sprawl position and you get to this part here, there's very little that he can do, okay? Um, he might give you a pass. He might try and kick this leg back through and try and gain a half. But as you know, this is a great passing position for me, okay? Like, there's a lot that I can do to start passing through. You know, I can go double unders, ba da ba da ba, up, around. So, that, that's maybe one of the only, like, logical things that he can do. But if you've got good pressure and he tries to kick that through, you can take your side. The one reason you might go to the side control rather than to the back, which look, it also isn't wrong. I saw some people are going here and they're starting to pummel around, is he can turtle here. Okay, granted it's not a very good turtle, but he can. And if he gets his knee up, we can start to take the back, okay? So, it all depends on what, what look he gives you and what you want to do from there, okay? Um, you're going to get a chance to try it now because we're going to do some situational, okay? So grab your mouth guards. Oh, are there any questions? Any what ifs? Awesome, that's what we love to hear, okay? Grab a drink, grab your mouth guards, we'll get into some situational. Hey guys, so uh, yeah, that's the end of another session here. Uh, just a pretty standard Tuesday night. But um, you may be watching this post ADCC New Zealand, but um, I'm, there's a couple of the team here and myself that are gonna be competing in that. So conditioning and winning these little scenario positions like in a pass and sweep situation and denying scoring is such an important part of ADCC rule set. So just getting the team working on that is uh, pretty crucial. It's good for everyone, not just the people competing. Fight for every position, you know, good intensity. 20 minutes of positional passing and sweeping and guard work is pretty full on. Um, so yeah, hope you guys like that one. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and all of that. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you in the next episode. Cheers.